The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. We'll start in one, two minutes, okay? Okay, I think we can start. So I want to say hello to everybody. Uh, I hope you see my screen. Okay. Uh, maybe to start with, let me introduce myself. I'm Mateusz Budziński. I live in Krakow, Poland. Uh, I work for Gretek Innovation as, as a product technical manager for structural software in Gretek, uh, which means I'm involved in the planning, uh, development, and engineering care of advanced design and the design modules of advanced design. Uh, this webinar is called What's New Ad is in Advanced Design uh, and will be more focused on the last update one to Advanced Design 20. 22, but I also took a little about uh, selected main novelties provided with the 2022 version, uh, which has been released in June, so with less, less, more or less four months ago. So it's a pretty sure, uh, pretty fresh. Um, this is the agenda, the agenda, the frame plane for uh, today's meeting. Uh, I will start with short recap of the version 2022. 20, so I will try to quickly review just four main novelties. Uh, on the second part, longer part, I will focus on the current update 22.1. 20, uh, yes, so that's the the, the 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 frame frame. I think it will be less than one hour for sure or less. Okay, so I will start. As I said, I will start with a quick review of four novelties from 2022 version. Uh, first, first is a new generator for moving loads for from cranes. Uh, it generates loads from cranes as a set of uh, special load cases which, uh, with successive crane positions. Uh, loads are defined along the path the path along the crane runway, it's called crane runway. It's automatic uh, generation of uh, loads. Uh, and that path uh, can be, uh, we support two types of uh, runways. The, it, the first one is a single line, single line path for a monorail crane or set of two parallel, parallel uh, lines for a bridge crane. So the bridge cranes are the typical cranes There are several special uh, options possible. First, uh, on the model, we can define multiple cranes operating uh, simultaneously on the same time, either on the same runway, so we can have two or three cranes going on the same uh, runway, or we can have uh, multiple, multiple runways and then 
cranes can operate on different runners. Of course, the more cranes, the more of possible combinations. So the the total um, number of combinations is really wrong. Helpfully, we are using the concept of um, envelopes, so it's easier to uh, to create the final number of uh, combination using that envelopes. Okay. What is important? Uh, loads on wheels it can be defined by using several methods. So we can define forces totally manually, so by direct input of forces for each wheel. Uh, we can uh, get forces automatically by using uh, either European or American standards provisions. In fact, by crane loads according to Eurocode, it means that we enter uh, values per wheel, but uh, values uh, com that are coming from different kind of <clears throat> loads related to the crane, like a self weight, a haze load. For the by crane parameters and by crane parameters according to Eurocode or American codes, it means that we define, uh, we input data like um, the maximum um, load that can carry that uh, crane, the crane self weight, and so on. And the end, as the result, uh, the module calculates. The values and propose the values. Of course, it's up to us which group of loads we are using for that um, crane loads. Much more details will be shown tomorrow during the, <clears throat> uh, the webinar related to crane moving loads and cold front sections. So I I think it's a good good idea if you can register for the um, webinar for tomorrow when one of my colleagues will show you uh, this in, in details. Another novelty from the 22 version in advanced design is called uh, it's a new like the link type. It's called node node link. It's defined on the intersection point of linear elements and allows for defining uh, relations between selected degree of freedoms on linear elements at this point. Uh, so it can be used for modeling uh, scissor connections, as you can see on the screen. So between two linear elements, uh, we can def to model a bolt. We can define uh, that link type when only translation uh, degree of freedoms are blocked and the rotations are free. So it's a case of scissor connection. But there is also another nice um, example, another example when we can use uh, such a link. It's a hinge connection between a continuous parallel and rafters. So in that case also, the parallel can be either a continuous one beam or select a set of uh, individual beams, but are connected to the rafters by this kind, could be connected by this kind of uh, link. So we can model the hinged connection between them. Third novelty provided with the 22 version I wanted to mention today is, uh, is design of cold form sections uh, according to Eurocode. So, the cold form sections can be found on the profile library. There are different types of Z, uh, Sigma, or C sections. Uh, just, you know, for the next release, we plan to have also um, uh, parametric sections. So now you, from parametric sections, you can use only C sections. Other sections, cold form sections are available from the database. Uh, what does it mean design? Uh, of course, it's according to Eurocode 3. So during the calculation, uh, it's used the effective cross section. It's due to the plate buckling and due to the distortional buckling. Um, also, we consider the effect. We could consider effect the torsion and the warping, and it's done by activating the advanced stability feature. So we can also include this on on calculation. Of course, uh, finally. Uh, for calculated cold form sections elements, we have detailed results that are available on the shape sheet, also on the reports. So we can check uh, details of calculation. Of course, uh, for cold form design uh, 
there are many uh, special um, additional results, but the summary is here on the shape, shape sheet. And the last, the biggest novelty uh, related to 22 version was uh, was the RC slab module. Uh, shortly, so we can now open concrete slabs with the new RC slab module in the advanced design environment. Uh, so this allows us for generating the real reinforcement and drawings based on the critical reinforcement we have. Uh, in fact, we have two possible working scenarios. The first uh, method is to calculate the theoretical reinforcement in advanced design. So we do we model the slab, we do the frame cal uh, calculations, and then we do design uh, of concrete slabs to get the theoretical reinforcement. And then we export this data to RC slab module. In that case, we uh, on the slab module we can generate real reinforcement and drawings. Uh, but there is also a second scenario, second possibility. So we import from uh, advanced design to RC slab module the um, finite uh, element results. Then we do the calculation of the theoretical reinforcement using the special method called strip method. And next uh, next steps are the same as the first scenario. So we get the real reinforcement and drawings. Uh, with the first scenario, we can define the reinforcement by using manually defined zones, or we can get the real reinforcement automatically according to the predefined zones, the predefined settings uh, for that zones. Uh, of course, we can edit the reinforcement, mix automatic and manual methods. So, for example, you can get uh, one layer of bars uh, using the automatic method and then manually add uh, additional zones using our graphically um, defined zones. Uh, with the second scenario, when we import the uh, Tertica, uh, uh, when we import the, um, the finite element uh, results, uh with the strip method we can get the theoretical reinforcement from internal forces according to this method for this we divide a slab um, in by virtual strips in both directions strips can be defined manually or automatically uh, but in general internal forces in strips are uh, integrated so we get uh, force diagrams along the strips and then and then the theoretical reinforcement for each strip is calculated, uh, and finally we get the real reinforcement along each strip, of course for both directions. So, so no matter which scenario we use, finally we get the 3D reinforcement cage, uh, and based on this reinforcement you can generate calculation reports with some data summary info, and of course uh, we can generate uh, editable drawings uh, also with the reinforcement schedules of course with uh, in the case of wire meshes when we use uh, wire meshes on on the bars we can get also plans of cut uh, of meshes so there's another um, type of results it's called fabric schema okay that's all. In short, as I said, uh, it was just a short recap summary of the 22 version, just to remind what were the main points. Probably most of you are aware. But now it's the time uh, for 22.1 version. Yes, uh, uh, the main goal for the update one to the advanced design 2022 uh, was on improving the quality and uh, convenience of use of daily work. So this update uh, contains many improvements, uh, corrections, and uh, different kinds of adjustments, uh, but we can also find some interesting novelties. Uh, I will focus today mainly on selected small new options and improvements. <coughs> so we we'll start with, <coughs> I will start with the first small improvement. Uh, so now views that were created and saved in the descriptive model are also available on the analytical model. 
what does it mean? Uh, so this will make every everyday work uh, easier because we can now uh, use the previously saved views uh, on the geometric model and check results using the exactly the same view, the same filters. Maybe I'll show you. So I switch on the advanced design. So we have our model. I'm on the um, descriptive model type and there are some several saved views. So I, I've just selected several elements and you see the saved views on the, um, on the descriptive model. But when I do the calculations, I will open the model, calculate the model, then I can select from this list the same views. Of course, now we see the analytical models with meshes, uh, but you see you can select any kind of uh, view and do, do whatever we want, display some, uh, some results, internal forces and so on, just by using existing previously saved um, views. Okay, I will back to the firing point. Next, uh, another small improvement, as I said, uh, this version is a lot of small improvements, but uh, the next improvement is related to presenting results for planar elements uh, by using diagrams in section cuts. So when we define the section cuts in the model, we can display a diagram. So we can now, uh, previously we were able to see such diagrams for static uh, uh, calculation results from finite element re results. Now we can also display such diagrams for, uh, from, from, for results uh, coming from the design calculations of reinforcement concrete, like uh, cracking, or other. So again, I will open, I opened the uh, advanced design model. Mm. I have already there, there are some, uh, I hope, if not there, if there are not any section cut, I will define just by two clicks, one uh, new section cut. So if I want to display some result for, I don't know, uh, coming from simple so maybe i will first ah yes i forgot i'm using the visualization okay uh, what i wanted to notice diagrams sorry diagrams for concrete results here. What kind of results may be uh, cracking? Why not? As you can see, I'm trying to display some results coming from the um, reinforcement uh, uh, design. And now I can display such results also in the uh, diagrams in the 3D section. Okay, okay, it was a small improvement. Uh, another another change uh, improvement is related to the window of used to, to define uh, and manage load combinations. It has been updated. It changes mainly concerned uh, three, three aspects. Uh, change of the look on the appearance, uh, especially for uh, all tabs. So for on all tabs, we have the same um, view, let's say, of the table. Uh, there is a new cancel button and uh, there is a new column with the type of combination. So again, I will open the module. I will show you this dialog. Of course, it's a small improvement when it comes to the, when, when it comes to the look, but anyway, if someone was using, remember that the, the look was different. Of course, the content is the same now, except the combination type tab when we have a, a column called type. So we can easily check what are the kind of combinations generated. Of course, we can, if it's, if it's needed, we can easily uh, change the type of combination just by using the, the, uh, the list. And if, if we do some changes, 
and we want to stop now we can just easily use the cancel button cancel button of course without the will the so it's easy now to open ch check something and be sure that we don't change any value use the cancel button of course small improvement but always it's nice to have uh, small improvements mm, next point it's a new option in fact uh, we have now on advanced design a new material database uh, which in fact the material database is expanded with uh, different types of wood uh, used in Canada according to the Canadian star standard uh, 086 so now it will be easier to model uh, timber structures with uh, timber elements made from more typical for North America uh, just note that uh, this version is on this version is not possible to uh, do timber design calculation according to American and Canadian codes this will be possible in the next 23 version just to you I will show you how it looks so when I open the material and dialog on the list of um, on the list of uh, on the list of libraries we have in addition to existing timber database that is used for European uh, the materials timber from different European codes there is also a timber can US so we can select uh, different kind of catalogs let's say types of um, of timber and import them for using in the in the model of course we have the uh, all required mechanical properties also uh, properties used that will be used for design calculation as i said not in the version but all all data is there okay next point next point ah oh, next point uh, is nice it's when we display results uh, for planar elements you can now uh, select new display mode it's called isomap uh, it displays uh, areas of uniform colors as you can see on the picture so it, it makes it just easier to check the results and works not, not only with finite element results but also of, with concrete design uh, results so again i will yes i will use results for slab yes i will open, I need to open the model yes and now i will display just some pending moments maybe maybe i need to yes so it's a typical uh, way we display results with some iso iso regions of course uh, can use different methods but if i open the dialog for uh, setting parameters so I, I select as a display mode not iso region but isomap this is the new new method and i accepted it you can see the map is different maybe i will switch off the mesh of course you can select different uh, results i can change the number of colors So it's another way of displaying uh, results in a power planner elements. Mm, okay. Yes, next improvement. The uh, next improvement is related to uh, steel design calculations uh, according to Eurocode and Italian uh, NTC code. Uh, until now, uh, torsion uh, analysis for steel profiles was performed in advanced design only for closed profiles according to your code uh, now uh, torsion analysis uh, has been extended also to open profiles as i section c section and so on uh, in addition uh, the scope of verification count uh, verification uh, for torsion um, now depends uh, on whether the advanced stability analysis is enabled or not 
if calculations are done without the advanced stability uh, options, then torsion is analyzed to use the sand venant component, as then we don't have the info about the warping. Uh, in opposite, if calculations are done with activated advanced stability, then torsion is analyzed with both components, sand venant and warping, as we have warping component from the from the advanced stability. So quickly, quickly. Yes, there's a steel frame. I have there um, two two beams, steel beams. Both are uh, loaded with the um, some torsion loads, and just you see if I select the first one on design parameters for the first beam, I had uh, not activated uh, advanced stability option. While on the second beam the advanced stability options is activated. We don't go into much into details. We, to be honest, I didn't change parameters. I used some defaults, but I will see, you can see that after the design calculations for steel elements, for the first element, which was calculated without the um, advanced stability activated. So we see the torsional uh, sand venant uh, component. So the torsion is checked with one component uh and by the way it's uh the section as you can you, sh you should see it's a standard a sections while on the second beam on the second beam we can see that the beam is uh, has the advanced ability activated so the torsion uh, i'm not sure if i selected it correctly okay Oh. Uh, probably some I had some problem with displaying the value, but anyway, you see that the total value is uh, maybe I should re recalculate because the description was not correct. No, now it's correct. I know. Uh, so we see the results from total uh, torsion with both components. It's because we had uh, activated the, um, the advanced stability option for that beam. Okay. Go for the next point. Uh, it's related to reports. Um, so when we generate the report for the table called uh, level drift verification for seismic combination, uh, now for this table we have a uh, possibility to choose uh, how to determine the relative displacement um, that is used for verification. So we can either use the resultant uh, value that is calculated as the uh, root of sum of uh, squares of horizontal displacement, so it's the resultant, or or we can use uh, as the relative displacement both uh, maximum of both horizontal displacement. So for leverage verification table, we can select one or the second uh, method, and of course the table will look almost the same. Only the 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 value or the um, the relative displacement uh, used for verification will be different. I will not show you the, the table because I have no model, but uh, it's like that. Uh, another improvement, small improvement related to steel design. So when we display a table with deflection results for steel members in the shape sheet window. So in the case, if the element is not a part of the super element, now only the information about the results coming from the um, element this element deflection verification of, of that element deflection is shown so without the unnecessary part with the results for the super element in opposite if the steel element is a part of super element we see results for super element or for both element super element uh, it depends of if one or both verifications are uh, performed for the element so just quickly, so we display it on that elements. So we have there two beams, and for both 
that beams creates a super element and there are single elements. So if I uh, do the calculations of uh, deflections for that uh, beams and I have selected the super element verification with, of course, some parameters, then on results for that super element, you will see just that one check. Of course, for the single beam, by default, I will get only the element verification. In the case, if I select both options, so why not? I can uh, do the verification for super element, but also individual for each element using other uh, values. In that case, if I if I do the calculation, so I need to redo calculation for still for the super element, then on the results for the fractional, I am, am able to see a result from both verifications for the super element and for single elements. Of course, on this uh, will have different values of the length. Uh, if I set different uh, verification parameters, will have different values, of course. So it was just improvement related to separation of uh, results in a most uh, qualified way. Mm. Uh, next improvement is related to timber design results. Uh, now, uh, similar as it was possible earlier for concrete and steel uh, design results, uh, we can um, we can display results for timber elements using colors on the full shape of the element. So on that model, I had yes, there were some timber elements. So if I display any kind of uh, classical results in uh, in um, static results can could be displayed in the in the form of diagrams or could be displayed in colors. So then will there are displayed in could be displayed in the uh, full shape of the of the section. So we get that uh, result in final element result, but now also it's possible to display result in that way for uh, timber results. So maybe I will check some results. So again, by default, uh, we see some uh, a display working ratio for one of checks for timber elements. Uh, by default, it's a diagram, but if I select the display method by values, using the default options that uh, results are displayed in the full shape. So, oh, I did wrong. Yes, I didn't select it. Yes, now we see our results for timber design also in that kind of displaying results in full shape. Yes, small improvement, but as I said, we had on that version many, many small improvements. Uh, another Improvement, in fact, the change of the how the offset cancel option is working. The cancel or, or offset cancel option is uh, available on the um, utilities uh, ribbon. Uh, this command is used to remove uh, eccentricity defined um, on members, and it's especially helpful when uh, we modify an uh, imported geometric model. Uh, not that it's not the same as cancel uh, eccentricities, like removing eccentricities, sorry, uh, but uh, as after using that command, um, uh, eccentricities keeps uh, because uh, element access are moved we using that command with keeping the original uh, position of the element edges. So I will, I will open, I will show you maybe to understand it better, yes, I prepared. In fact, I opened the the model. So, look, this is a simple model, uh, a frame uh, with variable heights of sections, and this is the model I've I've got from I don't know advanced steel, or maybe uh, I've created it like that. But for the numerical uh, calculations, I maybe I don't want to uh, to use that uh, kind of 
uh, eccentricities. Because now on that model, in fact, I, I created it uh, in an easy way by uh, defining eccentricities. What, what will be done if I just remove the eccentricities? In fact, uh, I'll, I'll get the to input zero. Yes. So you see that's the the model after the pure uh, classical removing of eccentricities. But if I want to keep the the geometry like that and to to move the um, analytical model in a different way, for this I can use the option called utilities. Um, where is it? Offset cancel. How it works? If I use it, look, the geometry remains the same, but the analytical model is changed according to my needs. Of course, then I can use different kind of uh, options like uh, as you see to get the analytical model. Uh, in that way, so the geometric external uh, shapes are, 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 let's say, in the correct uh, angles. Okay. Mm. Yes. Um, in the latest version of the program, uh, the export of forces from nonlinear analysis uh, to GTCX, uh, GTC, GTCX uh, files has been improved. Uh, so when exporting data, or for example, to design modules, because we can use that GTC files uh, by design modules, uh, when we're exporting data uh, forces from all nonlinear cases and transferred uh, as uh, separate load cases. So because as you know, on advanced design, you can define a load nonlinear and load case, and it includes, it, it could include several combinations. I know. I could have one uh, load case, nonlinear case, that includes results from 10 different uh, load combinations. So now we export, during the export, we see all that 10, let's say, uh, combinations as a separate cases, as a separate load combinations. So it's much easier to, to control results. Uh, and in addition, depending if a uh, given combination was used in nonlinear calculations or not, uh, exported will be linear or nonlinear results for this combination. Uh, so, so finally, we have one, uh, let's say, plain list of all combinations with correct results. So, if there are some combinations that were calculated only in linear, then we we have exported only linear results. But if there were some combinations that were calculated as nonlinear, we'll get only nonlinear results uh, on modules. So now it's let's say works correctly as is expected. Uh, another improvement uh, is related to optimization of steel uh, members. Uh, we, ha we have an option, we well, had an option, uh, chain op optimizations. Now, um, if the next subsequent iterations do not modify the proposed optimal section, then no next, no further calculations are performed for the uh, remaining iterations, so which uh, reduce the analysis time. So if if we want to optimize using I don't know ten uh, steps, ten iterations, so uh, we imp so the entire number ten now is not the number of iterations, but it's the maximum number of complete calculations. So if it's enough to to do uh, to repeat five times the calculations and the uh, section doesn't change, uh, the process stops, so we save just time. Okay, now time. Now it's time for the info about the update one to advanced design modules, uh, because we have uh, also a large number of improvements uh, to concrete and still design modules. Um, uh, first point, the Russian language. It has been added uh, to the list of uh, available, available languages 
in design modules of advanced design. So not it's not on advanced design, it's only languages on uh, mo design modules. In fact, this allows uh, working in Russian, uh, which is especially important for Russian speaking users, uh, especially users of the reforms detailing and design tools in the Creative Power Pack for Revit, because as you know, the Power Pack for Revit uses, has some common part uh, with design modules. So the, so for that user, it was important to have uh, translated it in Russian. Also, by let's say occasion, uh, it allows us for generating the documentation in Russian. So if we have some cooperators from other countries, and they need uh, documentation in Russian, even calculations are done according to Eurocode, of course. Now it's possible. Uh, next next improvements is related to the um, automatic splitting of rebars. Uh, as you know, now RC Slab module, uh, when we work on top of the design, uh, now we have a possibility to check and automatically split uh, rebars if extending the uh, certain limit. By default, the limit is 12 meters. So it works automatically during the reinforcement generation. And, uh, and we have three methods here. So if there are three methods available to maintain the continuity of divided uh, reinforcement bars. So we can join the rebars by welding, by using the mechanical couplers, or by lapping. In case of lapping, we can define lap length or calculate it automatically. And of course, it's better to show it on the model. So we'll use maybe the same model as previously. Okay, there is a slab. Where is that slab? Yes. And I will open it on the on the design module. Okay. As usually the first start of design modules takes a few seconds more. Okay. This is a slab imported to the design module. Uh, so I will not go through many details. By the way, tomorrow uh, there is a webinar dedicated to um, design RC slab module. Uh, so if you want to mo know more about this module and the workflows, please uh, register for the tomorrow's uh, meeting. I said that we have a new option related to splitting rebars. So it's on the reinforcement setting. There, there's a special part related to bar splitting. So I can either just uh, select that I want to check the maximum bar uh, length. And if it's the case, I, I can also split bars that are longer using uh, different methods, lapping, welding, or mechanical couplers. Uh, Okay, we'll see what is the result when I do the calculation. Where is the result? Yeah, there are some. Oh yes, you can see because I selected the main couplers. So that bars were probably longer than 12 meters. So we're divided. And if I, if I display it on the drawings, I should also see I should see the um, couplers uh, where I, I was next. I didn't check the yes. So you see. So anyway, that's the new option. So now the schedules are correct. So we don't have 20 meters bars. So it's according to our settings. Okay. Next improvements related to drawings. Uh, in fact, there are, let's say, two changes related to drawings I want to mention. Uh, first is, uh, in addition to existing uh, default templates uh, for Tate block, uh, we had uh, A3 and A4 paper sizes. Now, uh, for most countries, uh, additional templates for A1 and A2 paper sizes uh, are added. Um, and the second change, let's say bigger change, 
because until now, uh, when we changed the uh, print margins, it had an impact on the scale of the generating drawings. To avoid this effect, uh, now the printout margin um, are, are, are defined on the DWG the template. Uh, but we can change the margins directly on the drawing graphically, and the width can be changed separately for each for each edge. Uh, and this change is saved to the title block template for the for in the DWG file for the next further reuse. So I will show you why not I will use the I will use the drawings for this lab. You see we we see um print out margins on both sides. Of course uh, I said before that there are new uh, um, new uh, default uh, sizes. So why not? I maybe I select A1. I can select. I can change the scale of the view easily. But if I want to change the um, the margin, it's now easy because I need to right click and um, select the option Edit Page Margins. Now I can uh, change them graphically. Okay, so I select this margin and now either using uh, mouse I can change the link or I can enter manually value and you see the the proposed by me uh, margin is there. If I apply it, then program asks me for saving a new template. And now, and now uh, this uh, this new template is available, so I can use reuse on the other on the other um, examples. Next improvement, uh, well, that are improvements related to info panels. Uh, first, in the column module, in the column, there is added a new column in a table for showing a combination that. That was decisive uh, for given reinforcement. So we have info for top, for uh, bottom longitudinal bars, what combination was a uh, critical one. And the second improvement is related to the uh, just viewing the tables, just to make it easier to view the content of tables in the info panel. Now we have vertical side slider, as well as separate horizontal sliders for each table. If so, if uh, if we have if we don't need to res if we don't want to resize the window to click to quickly see the content, you just you can use that sliders. Uh, next improvement improvements are related to reports. Uh, first, for uh, high uh, beams that are that contain uh, anti-crack reinforcement. There is now a dedicated section in the report uh, that contains information about uh, that applied reinforcement. The second improvement is related to steel connection module. When you have a new option combinations added to the report generator on the standalone version of the module. So with this new option, we can quickly generate a report of combinations used uh, by the joint verification just by pressing the button from the ribbon. Also for the gusset join uh, on the intermediate report, uh, we have additional info about the bending verification and verification of welds. So you see there are different kinds of improvements. To be honest, there are more. There are other additional changes, uh, new points, new small improvements on different uh, reports for different countries because on some countries uh, we, we had some problems. So several improvements related to reports for different modules were done. As I start to say about the steel connection module, uh, I will keep it. And so for the base plate joints, uh, to determine the bond resistance of anchors, 
the uncorrect lengths needs to be computed and now uh, it's the the calculation of the length is changed so for the french localization uh, when we have select the french design annex the uncorrect length is computed according to eurocode 2 uh, recommendations but also according to the cnc 2m recommendations and the smallest length from both uh, will be used to compute the bond resistance for other localization, the Eurocode 2 recommendations will be used to determine the anchorage length. Also, several other related improvements have been done, including new warnings, for example. So, the part related to the anchorage length has been a little bit changed. Uh, yes, next point is related to uh, calculation results table it's updated uh, for the rotational stiffness uh, so we have additional information in the table uh, so of course it depends on the type of the connection so the table could look a little bit different but we, you have now also the info about the type of bracing the limit versions uh, so both values of the rotational stiffness are also displayed initial value and the calculated value. Uh, next small improvement, uh, but important for Poland and for United Kingdom. So starting with this update, there is a new entry added to options with the second gamma M2 coefficient. Uh, the point is that for Polish and British national annex, Eurocode, Eurocode 3, uh, there is a different value for the partial factor gamma 2 uh, use if it's used for um, verification of elements like plates, members, webs, fringes, and if it's used for uh, uh, for verification of boards. So now we have uh, easily to check. We can easily check both values are used separately. And of course, uh, this coefficient uh, is not used for, by other localizations, but and default uh, safety values, uh, safety factor values can be uh, are set automatically, but can be modified manually if 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 it's needed. Uh, with this version, um, also we have improved a little bit a uh, way of displaying forces on steel connections graphically. And so not only single forces can be displayed, but we can also display, we can see a group of all forces. So this makes it easier to check internal forces, especially on that kind of 3D connections as we can see on the, on the, on the picture. Uh, I was talking all the time about new options and improvements, uh, but I want to mention that uh, at the end, in fact, about the imp other important point, uh, that this version includes a lot of fixes of bugs. Uh, some of our fixes to very specific problems that occurs in uh, really rare cases. Uh, some are uh, fixes to small but annoying issues. Uh, for example, as you can see on the picture, one of the problems was related to display of support reactions, uh, values of that support reactions for elastic support if the local coordinate system was uh, defined for uh, for that uh, support. So now, uh, values are displayed okay. So it was just an example. Uh, I will not, not say that it's the number, uh, I will not say what is the number of uh, fixes, um, but a lot. But the point is that we are continuously reacting on problems reported by users. So we want to increase the quality of the design and of course design modules. Uh, of course, the number of improvements provided with this update is longer than I presented today. The full list uh, of improvements you can find on the What's New document. You can uh, download it from the Great Tech Advantage website. So there is a point uh, with documentation for What's New. So you can check the PDF document. Uh, and and of course, um, sorry, I picked not that way. 
uh, as I, I said before, tomorrow we have two technical webinars. One will be done by me, and I will show uh, live how to work with new RCSLA module on that design. And the second uh, one will be done by my colleague Thibaut Frite, and he will show us uh, details related to crane moving loads and uh, related to design of cold form sections. So if someone wants to, uh, if if someone wants to see that it's possible so you can register and join uh, such webinars. Okay, that's all. So thank you very much for watching this webinar. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if there are some, I will check if there are some questions. If, if someone has any question, uh, you can put it in the chat. So you'll wait one, two minutes maybe. If there are no questions, then I will finish. Well, I see no questions, so in that case, I want to thank you again uh, for watching this webinar uh, and say goodbye and good afternoon. Bye.